Pow! Here we get that smirk off Dude, your face. I can't. Hey, we're not gonna play footsie the whole night, okay? You pick a side, and I'll go the other. I, I just won't cross the middle barrier. First podcast, dude. Yeah. What do you a, think so far? It's awesome. Your setup's great. Thanks for asking me to do it. Dude, here's what we're going to talk about tonight. Business. All right. Business as usual. And the way I see it, virtually you own a your own hardware setup. You could call it a franchise. Do they call it a franchise? No. We are pretty much as close to a franchise as you can get without being a franchise so legally it's not though no i'm just a normal employee (laughs) so explain how it works explain how you got into highline so i work for highline uh we are america's mobile industrial hardware store you can pull it at you so you don't have to lean forward there you go is that good yeah there you go does that sound better okay um and you know we sell we sell uh, industrial MRO parts, all the shop consumables uh, for the end user. So anything from nuts and bolts, you know, all the different grade five, grade eight of all that kind of stuff, uh, electrical terminals, <coughs> uh, drill point screws, sheet metal screws, just all that sorts of stuff that um, almost any truck shop maintenance facility will use. And how I got into it, well, I was in college at OU and was going into air traffic control doing their ATC program and uh, I think I was starting my third semester at, with that major. And Dude I didn't realize you went that far. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah I was You're I'm like actually only 20 hours away from. <laughs> Being an air tra- traffic control? No from a bachelor's degree. Oh of, in think, air something? No just I think, in I, a bachelor's I, think I can pick like general business or like What's one of those basic ones like communication? Business management or, or something. Some, just something. Um, yeah, I'm like 20, 22, 23 hours away. But no, I was just, I was uh, sitting in class one day and I, I had a new uh, teacher that or professor that semester. And I really was not looking forward to the rest of the semester with this guy. He was, I mean, lack of a better term, he was kind of a tool. And, uh, Dude, is that a pun? Because it's a hardware. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> now uh, I'm sitting there in class, and we had had, me and my wife Hope had had, you know, several discussions, and we'd been praying about it that should I really get into air traffic control because you don't really, the hours, you know, I would Are probably, crazy? I'd probably end up missing a lot of services <laughs> and, you know, at church and, um, Wherever they send you, you have to go. You can uh, kind of pick a region, but even then, they still may not send you to that wow. region. And so, <clears throat> but all air traffic controllers in the United States, um, unless they go through the military, um, outside of the military, they have to come to Oklahoma City to train. That's huh. It is the nation's hub of air traffic control wow. training. So... I was getting into it. I really liked it, but again, was um, really kind of uh, backpedaling on it. Not really sure if I should do it. And and also, they had um, they were getting into trying to diversify their traffic control world. And basically, I mean, I I don't care saying it. They were denying a lot of qualified white males. Really? Yeah. And uh, I knew I why, because they got in a big stink about they just. So is the government who runs it? Yeah, it's FAA, Federal Aviation Admi- Administration. Were they getting a bunch of push or something? I'm sure. I mean, it was who was president at the time. I have no idea. Was it, I didn't know if it was Obama or something. Oh, or... at that time, you uh, see what I'm the, saying? The, the, I thought you were talking about the FAA. Like, I wonder president. if it had something to do with that. Um, it could have been. It was. Let's see. I started Highline in 2015. I started that program in 2014. So, yeah. Hmm. Um, What's crazy about that, so they lowered the standards of who they were hiring. Um, You didn't, you used to have to have either four years of college, you know, a bachelor's degree, um, or a ton of work experience. No, you used to have to have a degree. Yeah, that's right. And then uh, 
And but then unless you went through these certain programs and the program I was in was actually a bachelor's in science. But it used to be you go through the program and your final your final was the actual FAA ATC test. And if you passed it, you got filtered into the next training session. So then they changed it to just a regular degree and you still had to apply and take the test. But they opened it up to people with work experience and all this stuff. And so they actually ended so up... So all this stuff's getting sketchy in your life. All this stuff's getting sketchy. A lo- couple of my buddies were getting denied after they had graduated the program. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I think there's a, there is an age limit. I think it's 30 or it's 30-something, like lower 30s. But because for they, what? For air traffic control to be in it, to start. Really? Yeah. You can't just start when you're 50 or whatever? Nope. You have to be... <laughs> Why? What's the practical reason behind that? Well, you have to... I know you also have to have um, medical clearances, you know, because they can't have you just randomly passing out when you're trying yeah. to guide a plane. That makes sense. But um, there's just a lot to it. And they ended up actually getting in trouble because they were the instructors in order for enough people to pass to... Because, okay, they were on a big air traffic control hiring spree. Because back in the 80s, the air traffic controllers went on strike against Reagan. And Reagan said, if y'all don't show up to work tomorrow, I'm firing all of you. And he did. He wasn't bluffing. He fired mass majority of air traffic controllers. What? So the group that came in after that, Mm -hmm. who were like, I'll be an air traffic controller, they're all retiring now. So a lot of people are retiring at the same time in air traffic control. And so they're on a real big hiring spree. And so I think that's also part of the reason why they wanted to open it up to more people because they needed uh, more people. Yeah. But you're getting these kind of not as qualified people coming in and uh, the instructors ended up having to give a bunch of people answers on the tests what? and they got caught. Yeah. Cause they couldn't what? pass the tests. Wow. And so, yeah, there was, there were some people that are like all, you know, writing like I'm scared to fly now because of air traffic controllers and all this Dang. stuff. Dang. I just saw an article yesterday. I think two planes almost collided at JFK or something like that. Did you see that? One of those guys that got the free answers. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay, so all yeah. that's going on in your All life, that's going on I in my head. saw an ad for something. Yeah, well, no. Me and my wife were like, where, you know, where, where are they going to send us? You know, all that's going through my head. I'm sitting in class, and the guy I used to go to church with when I used to live in Lubbock, Texas, uh, which is where I'm oh, from. Oh, I forgot. Kyle Schlabel. Yeah. Sent me a text because he worked for Highline at the time. He right. was a uh, vice president of uh, operations. And he said, hey, do you know a good hard worker in, <laughs> in Oklahoma that, you know, might want to do what I used to do in Lubbock? Because he was the territory manager back in West Texas. Yeah. Crazy thing. My first, in- my first interaction with Highline, I used mm-hmm. to wash his truck like every other Sunday. Uh-uh. His Highline truck. Yeah. So I very, very, very vaguely knew what he did. And, uh, yeah, um, that was my first interaction with Highline. So he sent me that text, and, I mean, I, I read it in class, you know. <laughs> was, and it was in get in the class up. of that guy. I said he was kind of a tool. <laughs> it was in his class. I was like, he rode you the wrong way. You're like, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was one of How those. How soon did you quit after? I quick. dropped my classes that week. Shut up. Dude, you make rash decisions. I, decisions. I, I, well, I went home, talked to Hope. I texted him. I said, hey, Kyle, I think I might be pretty interested. You know, I called <laughs> Hope. I talked to... What's the salary, like, of an air traffic controller? Um, You start out, I think, around the 40 to 50 range. That's you start out... a lot out. of schooling and stuff, though, for... Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of training, and then you have to start moving up levels. But huh. by year five, you can end up really making some Six pretty, figures pretty good money. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, you start out like that, but it moves up quickly. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. like, dude, that's like yeah, yeah, teacher yeah. salary. And, and there's actually three different parts to air traffic control, which a lot of people don't know. that Most people probably just think of the tower at the airports. Right, right. Okay, those are, those are the tower controllers. They basically just deal with runways, taxiways, and... Like a so very doing small the least of anything. and um, dude, yeah. you and like takeoffs, got into it. takeoffs and landings. Yeah, 
I actually there's a whole language like kind of like doctors you know they have their own language did you ever direct a plane no I never did um I never even got to do one of the simulators so they, what they, did so what did Kyle say though Kyle texted me you know he said do you know of a g- oh when I called no, him when you said I might be interested he he's said like, do it or no he said oh really he goes let's <laughs> talk about it tonight and so we talked on the phone that night for um I don't know an hour or two um, sorry, I got to backtrack the two other parts of ATC that people don't know about. There's a, usually at the bottom of each tower is a radar room, which can, which controls like a, fi- I think it's a 50, uh, radi- mile 50 radius. mile radius around the, that airport. Mm-hmm. And then there's like 20 something centers around the U S that deal with the high altitude flying. So there's actually three types of controllers. Huh? Yeah. So, anyways, talked to Kyle that night. I was getting really into it. You know, I was pretty intimidated, kind of nervous. And, um, cause you're like, I'm going to drop out of school, or is that what you, yeah, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this was in, so this is the beginning of semester of 2015. Is that what I said? Yeah. 2015. <laughs> this story's not adding up. I'm just kidding. Yeah, it is. Go ahead. And, uh, um, so what happened? I'm trying to think. It took um, you like a week or a month or something or what? I talked to a recruiter. So I, how do you get into it? You got to buy your truck and stuff, right? That's the real big kicker that it's makes that usually turns expensive. everybody away is you you buy your Would own you truck. Would you already knew that or no? Yes. Yeah, I'm Kyle, me and Kyle talked about What's it. What's a truck? What's it cost? Yeah. Um, I mean, just like, because I mean. No, no, Highline r- like really wants you to like go through their process of it. Um, like finance it? Yeah, they Those you know dogs. they're set up. Are they they're actually on both sides? they're trying to push leases a lot right now. Are they doing it? Do they own the equipment? No, they own the inventory. They don't. No, own no, no. Yeah, but I'm at the truck. They go through a third party guy that oh. that knows Highline's business and stuff. Yeah. You know, and so they try to push you to go through him. But they're trying if to push you leases? can, if yeah, yeah, it's because if you don't make it and you have to end up trying to sell your truck. It's very, very difficult. I know, but that uh, yeah keeps I, you around. I don't agree with it, but um, you know, it's that's just what what they're trying to do, and and yeah, they're trying to keep people around to stick with it because the longer you do stick with it. So here's what's crazy though yeah. is you do all that, but it's not called a franchise. Nope, I own the truck. You see what I I'm don't saying? own any of the inventory. I don't have to. Oh, that's why. I don't that's have a to difference order in a any of the supplies. They send it to me. You know. But you're ordering the supplies. You just mean you're not manufacturing them. Well, I mean, I order them for customers, and I can I can put what I can mark down what I want Highline to send me to stock on my truck. Right. But to actually, I don't order from our vendors. That's what I'm saying. You're not ordering from a manufacturer. No, we have you know purchasing already set up agents, which most of it's a Highline brand on a lot of that stuff, right? Some of it, no, it's just a very small. We like. 3M, they put our tape in, in a Highline box um, uh, so for like electrical tape. and It's just co-packer type stuff. Yeah, but it's all other major brands, 3M and uh, Deutsch and Weatherpack and uh, say it, you know, for like all those grinding wheels and all so that So how does stuff. that go? They're, you buy a truck and they, they send you with somebody for a little while first, like a week or two, like you ride in somebody else's truck? Well, the process takes forever. Um, you want me to just continue my story because it'll cover yeah, some on. of this. Um, hey, at this point, like you just take you ask me questions. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> I talked to a recruiter. I actually get dressed up, and I'm in one of the empty air traffic control classrooms, FaceTiming a recruiter, talking to this guy. And uh, I'm feeling good about it. Hope's like, if you really want to do it, let's do it. So I drop my classes so I get my full refund for that semester. But I'm not hired until two months later in October. What? Yeah. So I was Living working. I was surveying. Months. No, I was yeah, surveying. I was, uh, no, I was surveying at the time for Curtis. And uh, <laughs> so I did that. Started in October of 2015. Uh, you know, bought the truck. I got a used one. So my, that one I got used, it was 30000 so new or used? It was used. It had thirty. It had around thirty thousand miles on it, and it cost thirty thousand. What? So, yeah. 
a big Jeez. you know big Chevy box truck, so a three quarter ton. So that's the that's the big thing, the big kicker. So with that, we also cover all the expenses of the truck. So we we pay for the insurance. We don't get a gas card. We pay for our own gas, and so to and we're the first year you'll get a supplemental income to help you abate kind of a little supplemental salary to help you and then it's just straight commissions after that um yeah a base a supplemental salary <coughs> plus commissions and then after that it's just commissions. just your first year after that you're yeah just, i think they change it up so much for new to try to help new guys i don't uh, that, that was what it was like at when the time. i did it yeah so how did you get trained you went around with somebody um you have one week of training the, your very first day that you work for Highline. You you're are they in paying Dallas. you at this point? Is this a supplemental part? Yeah, yeah. It, from day one, it's that first year. It's supplemental salary, and if one of my customers in that territory called and placed an order, I would get commissions on uh, it. Yeah. So, but in between that time of the guy that quit before me in Oklahoma had. Almost all of Oklahoma, um, excluding East and Tulsa, you know. Um, after he left, they split it into North and South. I took the South Oklahoma Territory, which basically is everything south of 40 and west of McAllister. So that's the size of my territory, uh, which is pretty large, all the way down to the Texas border and west of the Texas border. So when they cut you loose? You, you train in Dallas for a whole week. It's called 101. They do everything from product to procedure to all, you know. What was the hardest part, product? Learning the product, for sure, because I had no idea what a butt splice was. Like, I no idea. I couldn't tell you the difference between a, you just knew that a was quarter size bolt and a three-quarter bolt. I, I had no idea about any of this stuff. And, uh, you know, there's, like I said, there's grade five bolts, there's grade eight bolts, which deal with their tensile strength and... Um, so was that the hardest part? Um, no, probably my hardest part is getting out there and just cold working call, hard, cold calling, working hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm allergic to it. No, cold, cold calling, calling? Is, and that's all I did that first, you know, year. What was the build hardest? up my territory, dude? Tell me about a guy that just told you to get off his property. <laughs> Did anyone? I, I saw your email, you know, when you invited me, saying what we were talking about, and think of the one that keeps sticking out in my head is a, a trucking company here in Oklahoma City. Fitzgerald Trucking? No. I'm calling him. <laughs> no, I love those guys. <laughs> those guys are awesome. Um, I'm trying to get Joey on. Are you? Oh, yeah, it'd be good. Um, No, I won't name him. I know the owner because I used to work for a bank, and he was a customer of the bank. So I went and saw him first. So you know how much money he yeah. has or doesn't have? Yeah. And uh, is he rich or not? No, he's pretty good. (laughs) 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 Well, I go see him first. He's like, hey, man, what are you peddling? You know, all this kind of stuff. And I showed him at first. Yeah. Well, the owner. Yeah. He he remembered me and everything. And he said, oh, man, I don't deal with any of that. Go talk to my shop manager. Oh, great. So I was instantly like, oh, man. And I wasn't going to walk in there and name drop. Hey, I know. This Why guy. not? I don't know. Are you serious? It turns some people off. Why didn't you tell me the owner told me to talk to you? I did say that. Oh. I guess I did say that. Okay. I didn't just like say like, I don't Hi. know. It's been a while. That was my first year. That was probably within my first <laughs> six months. Blur. Huh? It was all a blur. Yeah. So tell yeah. me. So what happened? So, so you roll. I there. think I went there twice. The first time, like I said, I saw Kenny. I saw that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? There's a million. Uh, That's yeah. the most generic name in America, probably. Uh, I went and saw the shop John manager. John or Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> I went and saw the shop manager. And uh, that's funny. Uh, uh, and, go on. And I could just instantly tell he's one of these guys that doesn't like vendors. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so I was like, I don't remember his name at all. I said, hey, I'm Colby. I kind of went through my little thing. I think he stopped me barely 10 seconds into it. I was like, yeah, I don't really have time today. I was like, okay. I was like, I can. He's like, just, I don't even know if he said come back. At He's this like, point, your voice gets tired. You're like, yeah. oh, no, okay, well, I was just trying to stop you sure? by. Okay, uh, nuts and bolts. <laughs> and, uh, and I still hardly know anything about the product, you know. So. Of course. 
Well, I think I'd go back a week or two later. Yeah, yeah. I went maybe back a week I just or caught him later. in a bad mood. Yeah, I think I, you know, he at least let me give him a business card and that kind of stuff. And uh, I walk in there the second time because you walk up some stairs. That's where his office is, um, overlooking the whole shop. Oh, great. And uh, there's a guy in there talking to him on at a his perch. desk. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I open the door. It's like a, a house screen door, you know, kink, 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 you know. And uh, oh, I open it. Sounds I'm scary. Like, I'm like, hey, yeah. I'm like, hey, you remember me? You know. <laughs> and back back then, man, like this job has really helped me, you know, not be so like, Bashful? I don't know, passive aggressive and all this stuff. You know, now I'm, uh, you know, like who cares? If someone gives me attitude, I'll tell them off or something. But <laughs> um, you're like the nicest I'm like, guy in America. Yeah, I'm like, hey, you remember me? You know. And uh, he's like, yeah, I'm kind of busy. And uh, you're like, really? You were two weeks ago. Yeah. Also. Cause there, well, there was a guy in there talking to him. I think oh. they were looking at a piece of paper, you know, or something. But I didn't leave. <laughs> I kept standing there. Oh, shoot. And I was like. Ah. You're like, okay, I'll wait. I, yeah. I was In oh. my head, I was like, I'll just wait for this guy to leave. And uh, so they start do. talking. Five seconds later, he looks back from the paper, you know, just like glaring up at me. He goes. There's the door. <laughs> <laughs> and you never like, went back. You okay. never went back. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I never went back. Is he still in your territory? Yeah. Try him again. Yeah. <laughs> I should. Like, nope. I highly doubt he remembers Screw me. That guy. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, he probably doesn't even remember you. But there's the door. Yikes. Yeah. There's the pointed at it. There's the door. Ay, yikes. I gotta okay. say though, when a vendor walks in my office, I'm like. Oh yeah, easy guy. I know. I'm. I'm sure. Um, I'm pretty quick to the point now. If I'm cold calling, I'm like, hey, this is what I, you know, anyone like, else tell you off? Because what Highline trains you, they train you to go through like these product boards that we have. They're pretty cool. They show a lot of what we have, and we're but we're supposed to tell them everything we do. You know <laughs> all this stuff. Now I'm just like, hey, I'm Colby. You want to come see my truck? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm like, I do inventory management, you know. Like, I do and the I stuff. have candy out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got some candy. Yeah. Do you keep everything? No, you don't keep everything oh, you I have access no, to. No, there's, there's no way you can keep everything. But my truck is designed around my customers mm. so that I do certain customers will clientele? use this. Sort of main clientele? <sighs> Probably heavy equipment and truck shops. Is your main clientele because they'll use anything wire, electrical terminals, nuts and bolts, cable clamps, loom. They'll use all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, um, plant facilities, plant maintenance. Um, they'll generally use quite a bit of stuff. They um, they have to use a certain type of wire that's different than just r- regular like primary truck wire. Um, it's like THHN wire. We're super high on that, so I don't even ever push that. <laughs> but that's what, you know. But they'll use, like, our shop cable, which is, like, um, basically, like, dual. It's multi-wire, multi-conductor wire. Oh. So, like, <coughs> like a 14-gauge, six, con- six conductor, you know, all wrapped up in a shop cable. They, you know, a lot of plant facilities like that make their own extension cords. And so I can sell the ends to that and just a whole roll of wire or cable, and it comes out cheaper for them. But um, that's probably my main um, my main business is heavy equipment and truck shops. Um, but I have, you know, Chickasaw Cultural Center is one of my customers uh, down there in Sulphur. Um, what is – what's another, like – what is the easiest sale you've ever got? Down in Sulphur, this guy. That guy? Yeah, no, oh. it's not the Chickasaw Colts. It's this other guy. He's a rancher down in Sulphur, but he also does a lot of oil field stuff. And uh, I had a customer in Ardmore that said, "Hey, and he uh, they're called uh, Stereo Design, so they put they put sound systems and various other things and and vehicles." And he was like, "One of my best customers is uh his name's B.J. Johnson." And he goes, "You should give him a call. I bet he I bet he'd like." something like this i think he was you know saying he needed somebody because he's always sending guys to the shop and i was like okay i was like i'll give him a call 
so I called BJ and uh, I was like, Hey, I was just talking to, um, uh, Daryl and, uh, he said, you might, you said you might, uh, use somebody like me to supply <laughs> you your shop him with. in person or you called him? I called him and he goes, he goes, Oh yeah, man, I'd love to, love to meet you. Um, and I thought he was in Ardmore at the time, like, you know, that's where his shop was and stuff. And I was like, so where, where are you out of? He goes, oh, I'm out of Sulphur. And I said, oh, okay, I'm going to be in Sulphur, like, next Thursday or something. It was, like, a week or a few days less than that or something. And he's like, okay, yeah, just uh, tell me when you're in town. We'll meet at the Walmart. <laughs> so I meet him at the Walmart there. And uh, <laughs> he's like, he's I like, just need to help with my groceries. Yeah. He's like, follow me out. So I'll follow him out uh, to his place. And he just starts flipping through the book. He goes, I want this. I want this. I want Shut this. up. <laughs> it's one of the biggest setups I have. Get I mean, he has he has a grade five bolt bin that goes up to like three quarter inch. He's got a galvanized pipe bin. He's got still a, a customer. Black pipe bin. Yep. Still customer. Just nobody ever called on him. Probably. And it's in it's you in think? the shop, big shop behind his house. It's not. So it doesn't look like ever, a business yeah, shop. It's not a business shop. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> him and his brother brothers own like a like a six seven thousand acre ranch out by Sulphur. Uh, but it, like I said, he also he also uh, runs some oil field companies, and that's what he does it under is his oil field company. Um, but he, you know, he has all that equipment to work on his ranch. And so they're fixing a lot of their own equipment, and uh, it's just in this big old shop. Um, really, really, really nice guy. Um, but I, when he was going through all of it, and I st- I'm sitting there in the back of my truck trying to keep up in my notes, and I was like, "How much you want to spend?" He's like, "Oh, around probably five grand." I was like, "Okay." Well, I mean, that's a big sell for a Highline guy. Yeah. Like that's a really big one-time sell. <clears throat> And, and, I mean, I split it up into several different orders and used a bunch of promos for them and stuff, but that was my easiest. I called him, followed him, and he just told me what he wanted. It That's was $5,000 later. And, yeah, he's still a still good, good customer and I'm trying to trying to actually supply his uh, aerosol sprays now. So, trying to get in. So, he let me do that. What is your most successful sales tactic? Um, do you call ahead and make appointments? No, I walk you in. Show up every time. Show up and I don't go to the front door. What? The the office ladies will stop you. They'll really? say, "Oh, he's busy. And you have you a card, and you'll never get a call." Shop. So I I go. I find a shop bay door or a way I can get in, and I talk to. I try to find the maintenance supervisor or um you know shop manager or shop foreman uh but if i do see a maintenance worker or mechanic i'm talking to them first you know like hey to see who's in charge yep to see who's in charge say hey i use this is what i do i was like who do i need to talk to about this and they'll almost always guide you to where you need to go and then you're in front of the guy you need to be in front of and just go from there um yeah, so I I don't ever. Go How do you the find them? Driving by, drive around, and think if hey they may use something I. You I don't got. Google or Facebook like. No, I use companies. Google a lot too. You do. Um, a lot in wastewater plant was re- has been a real good customer of mine, and I found them off Google Maps because I saw just their big plant outside of Lawton. Like, what's that big building? So I drove out there one day, and <coughs> they were like, "Yeah, got me." Started getting me a bunch of POs. Do most so. of your customers like? No one's ever called on them, or is it like most of them um, are like pretty competitive? No, most of them are pretty competitive. Um, there, there's a few instances where I've gone in that they're not being serviced by anybody. They're having to buy their own stuff, you know. And, uh, but most everybody already. Where has do you go someone. buy all the stuff you have if nobody services you? Um, you either order online, or <clears throat> they got to you know you can go to not hardware though. Uh no, well yeah, no nah, you can actually get it pretty cheap, you know. I mean, if you're buying non-American made stuff, the thing about Highline, we try to make we try to uh, carry American made product. 
like all of our nuts and bolts are guaranteed American made. Um, our drill bits and taps and all that are American made. Does anyone ever like get your number off your truck and call you? Yeah, occasionally. Dude, tell the. Oh, <laughs> uh, which one? <laughs> I have two stories from the. Tell phone both of calls. them. Tell both of them. Oh man! Immediately. First, turn your phone on silent. Yeah. Oh, is it? I thought it it's did. vibrating. Okay. It's going wah wah. Um. <laughs> oh man. Dude, tell the Sorry. tell the gas station story. The loves one. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard this, DJ? Oh yeah. <coughs> um. <laughs> so I'm driving out to. I'm either going to Clinton or Weatherford that day. And uh, it's it's pretty early in the morning, and uh, you know by the time I get out, it's it loves right before you get to Clinton, <coughs> along I forty. And I had already had quite a bit of coffee that morning, so you know naturally I had to stop and go pee. So I'm walking in, and I'm getting pretty close to the bathroom. I have to round this corner, and this guy there just gives me like super like large amount of room and it like backs up you know is like just unnecessary he's like you know like here you go you know <laughs> he's like excuse me <laughs> and i was like thanks you know maybe he's just a super nice guy <laughs> and uh i walk in his bathroom and i start peeing at one of the urinals and uh he walks <laughs> back into the bathroom because i saw him come out of the bathroom he walks back in Goes to one of the stalls, gets some toilet paper, fake, blows his nose, and then walks to a urinal two down from me. And uh, he's, like, kind of smirking. And he's like, had a lot of coffee this morning, huh? <laughs> I was like, yep. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm just like, oh, I got to get out of here, you know. So I wash my hands. I go back out to my truck. At this point, you're still thinking, like, Nothing of it, right? Like this guy. No, I weird. thought it was. Yeah, I just thought he was weird. Just, just thought he was weird, and uh, you know. But I'm not. I'm kind of keeping. Like I'm super aware of my surroundings at this point. I'm like, <laughs> okay, you know. And uh, well, I parked right in front of the store, and so I hop in my truck, and I'm like, I'm just gonna sit here for if, just a minute or two, and, you know, see what this dude's all about. So and, you uh, saw him. Yeah, he walked out of the store and goes... He's, like, low-key following you. Kind of, yeah. Walks out of the store very... right, Like, right after I got back in my truck. Goes to his car, which is at one of the pumps. Pulls it up to a spot two down from me at the store. And uh, <laughs> gets out and starts smoking. <laughs> but he's... Whole body has faced my direction. I'm still sitting in my truck. And, uh... He's just smoking, look, you know, looking around, but I can tell he keeps looking at me. I'm like, all right, I'm done with this. I'm leaving, you know. Okay. So at this point, what are you thinking? I'm just like, this, this dude guy's is weird. weird. I'm getting out of here. Like, I got some work to do, you know. I gotta go get a customer. And uh, I look. He's got like a Georgia license plate, you know. And uh, I'm driving along. I mean, it's not three minutes later, you know. I get on that access ramp. I'm back on the interstate. My phone goes off. <laughs> and, um, he used some choice words, but to sum it up, he said, "Dang man, you look good in them jeans." <laughs> and I'm a, I'm still assuming it's him. I don't know who Get else. Get out of here! Because my number is on the side of my truck, and so I just my first reaction. Did I just he look start gay? Laughing? Ah, no, no, just normal look. I mean, I think he's wearing a wife beater or something did but you take offense to it like he thought you were gay <laughs> no i just cracked <laughs> i just like, instantly laughing i'm just laughing and i'm like what should i say you know and get I'm like, the heck out of here like you're gonna text him back like I did you no i uh, never did i you know but i started screenshotting it and send it to a bunch of people you know like look uh, what I, it's like i'm pretty sure a dude just sent me this you know you're so and, excited uh, but i started laughing and you're then like, i was I still just got like, it hope yeah I was like, yeah. So, but, uh, no, every once in a while now, my father-in-law will will say, dang, man, look good in them jeans. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I just What's the other time? Up. The other time, I'm at the post office in Tuttle. And so, 
The only reason I think this may be connected to my truck phone number is because um, somebody was pulling a prank on me, or it was just a wrong number. And uh, have you heard this one, DJ? No. Not okay. Uh, <laughs> you have. I've told you this one, haven't I? I'm sitting there at the post office because we got to send various papers in the Highline and stuff, and um, get a call. He goes, "Hello, hey." what's going on? I'm like, uh, nothing. Who is this? I don't remember the name. It was a woman. And, uh, she's like, who is this? <laughs> I was like, this is Colby. And, uh, cause I almost answer every call being a salesman with my number on the side of my truck. I'm going to answer it. So, um, uh, and, uh, I'm like, this is Colby. Um, she goes, Oh, so, this, I guess, doesn't tip her off, but I guess she's still expecting somebody. She goes, hey, um, you gonna pick, you still picking me up from the airport later? And she doesn't sound completely normal. Like, I, she may be on, you know, like, a little drunk or something. And, uh, I'm like, I think you have the wrong number. And she's, you know, I'm being nice. But she's like, oh, Really? She's like, ah, oh, so sorry. I'm kind of inebriated right now. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. It's like, uh. Yeah, I kind of picked up on that. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's like, huh. And she's like, Colby, you seem really nice. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Click. <laughs> yeah. No. I was like, well, you're like, I'll feel, I'll go ahead and hear like, this one out. Yeah. I like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wanted At to. One point, dude, is there dude, a recorder deal? You can like hit record. I wish. Because I've had a couple phone calls lately. I wish, like, man. Can, if you screen record, does that get your no, phone? I tried it. Oh, you did. Uh, I tried it. Yeah, as soon as I, as soon as I hit it, it goes like button. two or three seconds, and then it cuts off. Look up, tap my phone like on the app store to see if it goes up. But uh, <laughs> he's on it. Yeah. So <laughs> she's, she's. Like, Kobe, you seem like you seem really nice. You seem like a really nice man. Oh my god, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. She's like, she's like, oh yeah. She said, "Are you married?" <laughs> and I said, "Yes, I am. I am married." She goes, "Oh, then your wife must never know." <laughs> and I was like, "What?" I was like, oh. um, "I was like, okay." I think it cut off. I don't hear myself anymore. Hold on. You're sitting on the cord. All right, try it again. Is it good now? Mm -mm. I can hear you. Yeah, good now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so that was the point. I was like, okay, I got to get off the phone. She's like, so you your wife must never know. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I hope you find who you're looking for. And I clicked and I clicked it off. I was like, wow, that was so weird. Uh, oh, man. Those are, you yeah. know. But Those occasionally I actually do get Those phone calls. Those are your calls. only two? The weird ones. Yeah. Those are my, but I do get calls about. Hey, you do this, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so people actually see your number and uh -huh. really, <clears throat> it's not a whole be... lot, but it, occasionally, every now and then, a couple times it a year, painted. Um, was that expensive? I'm actually trying to think if I have a customer, like still, that's based off of my number on the side of my truck. I'm trying to do a little market study. DJ said he's wrapping his van. Oh yeah, oh we yeah. We gotta see if this works or not. So we got two booty calls, one from a gay guy, one from. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, next. But I was so curious though. I did go to the airport that night. And said, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I, I told Hope about those. <laughs> did she laugh or did she? Mm -hmm. She was like, that's really weird. She's like, take your number off the side of your car. 
And I think she may have been like, are you sure nobody was pulling a prank on you? I was like, I don't really know. That's what's sure. weird, it but no one ever told you. So if it was, you know, honestly, like that's the funny part of a prank yeah. is like you tell them. Later. Yeah. Like they could have been watching me from like total donuts or something and laughing. Oh, that's but, true. Oh, yeah. So it, a complete stranger, but yes, they're watching. But oh, that's actually, true. that's true. You re- know, the honest <clears throat> truth a af- few minutes after it happened, I was like, was that Steve? <laughs> Get the heck out of here. I, I was like, did Steve set this up somehow? <laughs> Dude, because oh, you know shit. you're always acting like you're gonna run over me and stuff if you see me. That's uh, funny. Adam Locke did that this morning. Almost hit you. Going, where he was coming out of Minko. I was going into Minko, and I see this black truck swerve into my lane and then jump back Freaked over. And at first, I'm like, "Did you see your truck from a year ago?" I know. I was like, "Is somebody drunk already?" And then I was like, "That had to have been someone I know." And he texted me right after that. Uh, I was like, "You, you." Really. That's funny. Uh, I still never forget the time you you were in that giant truck you remember that hmm. going through town right in the middle of town in total in the peterbilt yes and you you got in my lane real quick obviously because you knew it was me remember because you said you could hear me laughing with my oh. windows oh, rolled oh up. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah i was like what is this guy doing because <laughs> i started veering to miss it and yeah. then you jerked back over and i saw it was you i just you're like ah! died laughing yeah man all right sorry back to business oh we don't have to be I mean, you act like you have to go back to class now or something. Yeah, right. You're in trouble. Nope. I just thought if I didn't know. If, hey, so you're the guy. If you want to go back to business, cool. It's up to me, huh? You want to talk skiing? Or Are you, you saying this skiing? is my podcast? <laughs> hey, <laughs> it I is your pet. I have a lot of phone recording apps. There's a lot of phone recording apps, yeah. he says. Yeah, but you have to pay for them. Are hmm. you serious? No yeah, free phone awesome. recordings. Uh, oh yeah. Did did they say anything about the screen recorder deal? Cause mine mine didn't work, but I didn't know if it was just. <coughs> what? Yeah. What? No no no. <laughs> Genuinely what? <laughs> if you uh, there's this one app that you pay like ten dollars a year or something, and if you hit four during the prime time, it shows it. Pay ten dollars a year. Anytime you want to press four. Dude, what kind of weird trouble are you in that you need a phone <coughs> recorder that bad? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Right? Yeah. Or like I could see like like in your case or something, somebody's placing an order yeah. over the phone. Yeah. And you're like, I need, just need to record it. That's what I'm saying though. Is like what kind of private investigating are you getting in? The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, dude. So I think one of the major parts about Highline I forgot to mention is I am primarily an inventory management specialist. So after I get a customer, right, I'm yeah. going to organize all their stuff. I'm going to label because it because that's the big kicker to yours is you're like, and that's convenience. where the truck comes in. Is very few people do that. So right. I show up. Who else does that? Who competes with Ram? You? Snap on Ram does it. Snap on is tools. I've never even heard of Ram. Yeah, yeah they're wouldn't. actually loosely connected to Highline. Yeah, I won't tell that. I mean, basically, some guys left Highline. They joined up another company. This company wanted to start franchising. These select few guys didn't want to do that, so they started their own company called Ram. Uh, I think that's how it is. Is it successful? Um, Yeah, there's a. I run into them quite a bit around here. Um, I run into a guy named Gerald and Justin. It's a father and son. Uh, Justin is mainly. Justin is mainly in my territory. Um, Gerald is is also in the city as well. Um, but, <clears throat> um, yeah, they so they have a truck and stuff. Um, they're, they're, I mean, I don't think their product is as good as quality as ours. Um, I mean, they are cheaper. The thing with Highline is we, we are um, on the upwards um, as far as cost. We're, we're kind of more on the Your higher part, end of that. Premium-priced product. But we don't charge a monthly service fee. We don't have a minimum purchase order. But does that bite you in the rear sometimes? Yeah, I'll get dropped. Cause people I'll lose like customers because of price all the time. No, no, no. Not no, all no, the no, time, no. but... I'm saying not having a monthly deal? No. Does anyone ever get a bin and you're like, okay, it's been six months and I still haven't gotten anything for you? You see what I'm saying? <sighs> if it's six months and they still haven't bought anything, I'm not going. I'm not. I'll stop going. But what do you do with all the bins? Well, if they, they bought them, them, if they bought them, they keep them. Or if I 
used my bin allowance money. They keep them. Um, the only time that we have a thing called a flagship program. So if there is a decent sized company anywhere, for, you know, if they use, if you use enough product or whatever, uh, we can do um, a flagship program. And that is where you do sign an agreement for three years saying we're going to be your main vendor for these At type the of products. At the end of three years, then you get to keep the if, if you drop us within that three years, we're taking all these bins back. Right. We'll supply the brands for free. Right. But we're going to take those bins back. And, or you can pay them minus 10%, something like that. Hmm. Uh, so um, that's the only really kind of agreement we have. Other than that, it's just go get a customer and and just keep showing up and supplying them. Um, <clears throat> say you say you owned a say you bought a feed store tomorrow. Okay. And you had to fix the sales side. What would you do? Fix the sales side? Not fix the sales side, but what would you do to the sales side? Um, at a feed store. Using the knowledge I have now, I would try to, I mean, I think we've talked about it. I would try to set up some kind of inventory management system like I like they are with that. Um, just with, you know, it's kind of, it'd be, it'd be difficult, you know, it'd, it'd take a while to, to figure it out, but as far as people love the service, around? people love coming to you with their product, you know? Um, and if you can organize it and manage it for them without them having to think about it. Right. I, yeah, I think of like <clears throat> stuff, what would that work with? Like with anything, you know, they do, you CentOS does it. They have facilities, they have uniforms, they have, uh, you know, um, uh, first aid and they do an inventory management service or they right. come in, restock the first aid kit or replace the mats they take your uniforms and wash them you know just yeah. that service type but in a feed store yeah if you can find customers that consistently use the same type of stuff mm -hmm. and they have a big enough space for you obviously you need more space with the feed store products than you would highline mm -hmm. bins mm -hmm. but if you could keep this stack this stack here and even make labels for them or something mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> this and goes here this 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 goes here they can set mins and maxes you know don't order me more until it gets below three bags mm -hmm. or and you know kick it back up to 10 bags or whatever so is that how you do all your stuff um <clears throat> i tell people all the time we have mins and maxes but actually very few customers do actually set mins and maxes because it's it's kind of a trust thing you know i well, they say don't give me too much but don't yeah let me run i mean out. they I know what overstocking is. Right. I know when I overstock someone. You do that at the end of the month? No, I don't. Have you ever? I mean, there's been occasions I have, yes. <laughs> but it's never, it's never. You intentionally I have never overstock done, someone? I've never done. Okay. <clears throat> there are certain levels that I, you know, will look at um, as far as the level of what's in there, the level of the product that's in that bin or hole or whatever and i will and i will restock once if i can kind of start seeing the bottom or whatever you know i'll restock them like we all know when someone's getting low on something right okay um <clears throat> does it the take only a while time to get it, like... i would consider overstocking that i have done a few times is if they, if I know they could probably make make it one or two more trips without me supplying it, and then I'm like, yeah, I'll go ahead, and, you know, do that. But sometimes I'll do that too if I know I'm. So you're if more I'm just taking like saving a, yourself a trip. You're not trying. Yeah, to like... if I know I'm going to be out of town, there's certain things uh, I will add. Right, right. Now, straight up overstocking just to get a sale to make a number. No, I don't do that. That's ridiculous. Um, don't freaking lie to me. I have seen so many people get kicked out of shops because of that i don't really so. oh yeah because they're just like trying to hit a quota i've had customers you know told me they switched to me because they had a guy coming in there putting in doing that very thing hundreds of bolts that they hardly use get out of here those are the i was told one story um this guy kept getting a invoice for like a certain like cable ties like 
seven seven inch eleven inch cable ties, and uh, <clears throat> he would keep some in his drawer, but he'd also like, hey, leave a bag or two up top as well. And he said, well, there would always be a new bag every time, every time, every time. I mean, like every invoice, the same, the same two cable ties are on top. He goes, we moved the bins out one time. The dude was shoving the two on top to make them fall behind the bin and putting new ones on top. They said they were thousands, thousands of cable ties behind that bin. Dude, just... I mean, you're like hiding product from your customer just so you, you think the guy knew it. Uh, I mean, obviously found it in a, after a while. No, I'm saying, do you think the guy that was restocking them knew it? He was the one pushing the cable ties behind the bin. I'm saying, do you think he was doing it on accident? No. It was He's legit. getting a sale. <clears throat> um, okay, so what else would you do? Um, I don't know feed store stuff. I don't know. Um, What's your best one-on-one on one sale? One yeah. What? What's your best one-on-one -on -one sale thing? Like cold calling people. What's the best thing that you say? Um, I don't know if I have a certain phrase that really not a phrase, is successful but like every time. <coughs> I just try to... My biggest thing is I just, from the instant I walk down the shop, I'm trying to establish a relationship with that person. I don't want to be just a salesman that walks in there. I want to make sure they know that I care about their company i care about their position i respect their rules and what they want me to do um i try to get those points across you know like i'm not gonna overstock you i'm gonna be here consistently um i try to establish that that relationship and that rapport um because i mean i'm you know trying i manage anywhere from 60 to 80 customers um a month you know that buy from me and i run a two-week route so i see most of my customers every two weeks how much more room do you have to grow uh, like customer wise you think it Depends would on depend on it would depend on the size of customer you know i could add five have you ever turned someone down because you're like i can't um no i've never turned them down initially but the smaller accounts i oh, smaller. i do have to just stop showing up can you ship them stuff though? Haven't we talked I about can. this? I can. I mean, I can, but they don't. They're not going to call you for it because you're overpriced. And if you're just going to ship it, it's not. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you're not good in the service, they're not going <clears> to <throat> buy from you anyways. Yeah. Um, but you know, um, it just depends on the size of the customer. If I mean, if I could grow or not. So, I mean, how much I could grow? It would be kind of more based on like dollar value, you know. Um, because a good, a, a good, so the thing is too, with Highline Commissions, I think we get paid a lot better than other people in this industry. So that's why it's um, somewhat higher price, you think? Yeah, I mean, because Highline's going to get their cut, and the, me, the territory manager, is getting my cut as well. Um, but one of my buddies in Louisiana that works down there, he was talking to me. He was talking to a competitor that worked for Lawson Products. And uh, he was bragging about his territory. This Lawson guy was to to my buddy, hi, my Highline buddy. And uh, he was saying, yeah, you know, I got like a, it was like 1.5 mil or $2 million territory, you know, and I make this much. And, and uh, my buddy told him, he's like, well, I run a, five hundred thousand dollar territory and i make this much and it was more more and he was like are you kidding me <laughs> you know and he works a lot less because if you think about two million dollars a year yeah. in little shop consumables that's a fourth of the that's work that's a lot of hard work it's a fourth of the work and then we're you know but another thing that makes it so easy too is if you can keep your customer if every part has a part number to go with it a label and it's organized. You keep it clean. Oh, it's really easy to fulfill. Once you get a customer, um, it it's so easy to walk walk in there. You say hi to your guys. I don't ever try to walk into a place without saying hi to the main guy oh, that right. I my contact or some of the mechanics. I want them to know I'm there because mm. I don't want to seem sneaky in any for kind special of way. Orders? Um, for special orders too, like do yeah, a lot of and to like see if they need anything start, that yeah. I'm not not in these bins, right. which happens a lot. So. They're like, hey, you got this. 
And another thing too is, um, even though they've been my customer for three years, um, I need to do this a lot more because it is effective. Hey, come come out to my truck. You haven't been out in my truck in a long time, and they'll start seeing stuff in my truck. Dude, like, hey. I got the te- I got the pitch. You ready? Yeah. You still take your dog with you? I, I haven't in a long time because of his what? hip his hip problems. He's having a hip problem, and it's hard. On, it's hard on him to ride in the truck. He took the seat out of his <laughs> delivery truck, his passenger seat, and put his dog. He has a huge Great Dane, and put his dog in there. <laughs> And yep. take them around with him. Yeah, it's fun. He, a lot of people do like old blue. He's a, he's a good but dog. that would be the perfect pitch. Like come out and see my dog's gained weight or. Something. Oh, you I know, did use like, that a lot. Yeah. Hey, come see blue. Some oh, people are like, dude. let blue out. He'll run around the shop. <laughs> huh. That's cool. But. So yeah. you don't take him anymore? I haven't. Uh, no, not <gasps> a while. You haven't got dog food in a long time. I bought it at Yukon last week. Oh, you dog. Gotcha. No, I feel bad. Gotcha. Dang it. Dang. You haven't asked me to bring you dog food in a long time. That's what I should have said. I'll probably ask you next time to get one of those special flavors you hadn't had in a while. You can get that podcast Aaron run. I owe you type of deal. Yeah. <laughs> I owe you for being on the podcast run. He don't know me nothing. <sighs> what else? <sighs> well, an hour. Married. Did it fly by? Two kids. It did. This is Are fun. you about to give a biography right now? Dude, Autobiography. Married, <laughs> married two kids. Two hey, and a half year old. Hey, give your wife a shout out. Hope love lady. She's what amazing. What do you want to say to her? <laughs> she is. She's a Colby great love mom. Lady. Really Colby love worker. lady. Thank you for calling in tonight on <laughs> Steve Love. <laughs> yeah. Who do you want to shout out tonight, yeah. Colby? Yeah. Let's give it to Hope Elizabeth <laughs> Love Lady. Uh, now we got two sweet little girls. Um, I love skiing. <laughs> Dude, talk about the ski trip. It's my favorite thing in the world. Skiing is my favorite recreation by far. Uh, there's a group of, I think it's up to 22 now. It's Stevie. out of control. 22 people going to Sipapu, New Mexico here in a few weeks. Uh, DJ cannot go because he's doing his wrestling thing, but his brother is. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> But it's going to be real fun. And also, like, the whole Sipapu Mountain has, like, 200 people on it. So we're, like, a fourth of the... <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a pretty small mountain, but it's a lot of fun. They, no, it's they pretty small. Have... It's by far the smallest I've ever been to. It is, yeah. There's three lifts, or two lifts. No, there is the main one. There's one off to the right. And, yeah, there's that one up top that takes you a little bit higher. Okay, let's count that out. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> Wait, let me pull That's up the trail map. Two I got it or saved. Three lifts. Get the heck out of here. Hey, pull up Sipapu trail map. Tell me how many lifts are on there. S-I-P something. I'm sorry. We forgot that little one that you hold on to. That's a T-bar. That doesn't even count. <laughs> okay. It's a halfway. Steve, are you going? Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, you're missing out. I went last year, too. Trail map. Oops. I've been studying it. He already got it. Dave, you're too slow. Hey, that's not what else you want to talk about? <sighs> um, Dude, come on. Surely you have a funnier sales story than those. What's the funniest sales story? Dude, I don't know. Those were kind of my that's main it, ones. Huh? I mean, I've had another... Those are good. Dude that, was, that had buyer's remorse but didn't want to tell me. <laughs> so he just started... <laughs> He just started, like, we were texting, and he started getting into all cats mode, saying he didn't want those bins anymore because they weren't the size I told him, which I gave him specific descriptions of the size and everything, but he didn't want them anymore, so whatever. <laughs> Buyer's remorse yeah, on the hardware. he definitely. <laughs> he wanted some bins to make his own little mobile cart, and uh, uh, I, I don't, he was, he's in Amber. He's in Amber. And, uh. It's my um, cousins. Yeah. That actually does narrow it down quite a bit. No. But, uh. <laughs> yeah, he did not. 700. Want the, I delivered him. I delivered them not to him. Not as specific as Kenny was, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a Saturday morning, I woke up and, I mean, and delivered them to him on a Saturday morning. And, uh, as soon as I pulled him out of the truck, he's like, 
I don't want those. He goes, those, those aren't the size you told me. I was like, yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> he's like, man, I was like, we talked about you wanted to stack them on one side. And he's like, no, no, that's not right. And I was like, okay. And I just put them back in my truck, drove off, started texting them. Never saw him or talked to him again. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to you have know, a good weekend, fill out a return and all that stuff, whatever. Barf. <laughs> Well, um, that's fun, man. Okay. We Thanks done? For being on, I guess. Now you got another guy lined up, man. Better not keep him waiting. Nah. Close out the show. Sing us your favorite song, go. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs>